Hello and welcome back to Guillotine 18th Century Chemist Theater. Uh, this should be, I guess, the last lesson in this unit. We're going to uh, talk about a few more ways to classify reactions. Uh, these can certainly be used in addition to the ones we've already talked about, so we'll review the driving force classifications that we've talked about in the prior videos, and then we'll talk about some new ways to classify stuff. Should be pretty straightforward. At the end, we'll practice balancing a few equations again, if you need a little bit more practice. So again, um, just like you, I'm, I'm sure there's different ways to classify you. Some of you uh, might be high school students, college students, uh, parents, brothers, sisters, tuba players. You know, we're, we're, all, we're all a lot of different things, and we can do the same thing with reactions. And so many of them will, will, will check off uh, different boxes, more than one box, when, when they're classifying themselves. Now, we can start by classifying things the way that we've talked about before, and that's the precipitation, acid, base, and redox reactions. Uh, how, how do you identify these? <coughs> well, with a PPT or a precipitation reaction, remember that we're going to be looking for two aqueous solutions and a product that is a solid. So those are pretty straightforward to identify. Uh, Acid-base neutralization reactions, we're going to be looking for an arrhenius acid and an arrhenius base. And then we're going to be looking for the production of a salt and then water. Again, very easy to identify. Now, you certainly could have something that is both a precipitation reaction and an acid-base neutralization. So I encourage you to try to come up with a reaction that would do that. And then finally, the redox reaction is a little bit more uh, tough to visually notice. Uh, you're going to be looking for a demonstration of the transfer of electrons. The easiest way to do that at this level is to uh, look for elements by themselves. Elements going into or out of compounds are going to be gaining or losing electrons. And show that's a sure bet that that's a redox reaction. Uh, you can certainly delve into the idea of oxidation numbers. And uh, there's plenty of good videos that talk a little bit more about how to determine oxidation numbers. And that's a skill that uh, you will need going forward in chemistry. We don't really need it too much yet. Uh, so those are certainly the ways to do that. And so we'll talk about a few more. And here comes a uh, Kembot here. Again, if you, if you haven't been tuning into the last couple of videos, you, you might not know who these people are, but uh, we will leave off uh, production of gas as a way to classify reactions. That that's usually comes into play in other reactions anyway. So most people don't use that as a classification method. And so let's run through the other couple ones here. Um, synthesis or combination reactions are pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm going to have some, by the way, some very simple uh, um, I guess, symbolic representations of these reactions. Now, these are going to be simplified and they're not all consuming. So you, for synthesis, for instance, you might have A plus B plus C or something like that. But we have more than one thing forming one more complex product. And it doesn't always have to be a single product. Like for photosynthesis, for instance, we're forming complex sugars, uh, but we're also forming oxygen. So as long as you're forming one more, uh, one complex thing, more complex than the reactants, you're in good shape. Uh, polymerization for your organic chem fans, you'll run into this uh, where you've got a bunch of monomers uh, coming together to form polymers. And, and that's, uh, again, not so much in first year chemistry you'll see this, but you'll definitely see this a lot more in organic chemistry. Combustion reactions are typically, and again, I know that there are people that will pick a fight over this, uh, typically you've got things reacting with oxygen to form oxides. Uh, and release heat exothermic reactions. Uh, typically, if you have a uh, complete combustion, you'll get a certain reaction. Uh, if you have incomplete combustion, you'll get different reactions. Uh, like for instance, when you have complete combustion of carbon, you'll get carbon dioxide. When you have incomplete, you'll get carbon monoxide, which is one of the reasons why you wanna make sure you have the right fuel for space heaters uh, so that it's not pumping up carbon dioxide into the room that you're in that can be extremely dangerous. Uh, but again, sometimes you're going to form one product, uh, sometimes you're going to form more than one product, depending on what's in the compound. So sometimes these can actually be uh, synthesis reactions too, if you're only making one product, but they're always a redox reaction. Uh, so you're going to be forming that. Now again, some people argue that you can have combustion with things besides oxygen. Hey, fantastic. You know, I'm not going to find anybody on that. But typically people consider combustion reactions oxygen related. Then the opposite, of course, of synthesis is the decomposition reaction, where you have uh, something that's more complex forming uh, two or more less complex substances. So that's, that's all we need to say about that. 
Single replacement or displacement, depending on where you learn the terminology, is where you have a loan element at the beginning and then it bumps somebody out of a compound and then somebody else is by themselves at the end. And these are, these are typically redox reactions, again, because uh, you're going to have an element going into a compound and another one going out of a compound. Um, and, and, and whether or not these will happen is whether or not a more active element can replace a less active element. And this is based off the pecking order of chemistry called the activity series. And I'll try to include a link um, uh, that, that will show you activity series. But if the link isn't working, all you have to do is type in chemical activity series, and I'm sure that you'll find plenty of them. And, and really what that means is that a more active element uh, will bump a less active element out of a compound. And again, there are, there, are, there are very, and again, the complexity of an activity series can be uh, rather daunting, or you can have very simple ones. It depends on how deep you want to get into the weeds. For instance, for the thermite reaction that we talked about uh, the other day in redox reactions, uh, aluminum will bump iron out in that reaction. So aluminum is actually higher on an activity series than iron is. And so again, you can think of it sort of like a school dance uh, where somebody will bump somebody else out. Galvanize iron, oh yeah, I, that, that's another good example. And when we galvanize stuff, um, zinc is more, uh, has a higher activity uh, than the iron, and so the zinc will oxidize first and, and do protective oxidation and protect the iron underneath. So again, think of a school dance. Um, you know, think, think of somebody that you're with and then somebody that you might want to be with more. And if that person shows up, you would, they, they, you, they would, you would allow them to bump out that other person. So... This happens all the time in schools, I guess. But, you know, you would know more about it than I do, I suppose. Uh, and then, then, of course, there's the double displacement or the double replacement. Uh, and, and again, this should look very familiar. Uh, this is where uh, you have typically uh, ions, uh, ionic compounds, and then they switch ionic partners. Typically, that's where you'll see this. This is not only precipitation reactions, but these are also acid-base neutralizations and sometimes gas production reactions too. And so again, you, you'll recognize that format very, very uh, um, easily. Uh, and again, these tend to be easy to balance too. So again, you're just looking for people that switch partners. Again, so you've got a school dance here, some of the, some of the hot styles of the year being, uh, being demonstrated there. And so if they switch partners, uh, then uh, you've got a double displacement or a double replacement. Oh, what's going on? Okay. Oh, let's see. Let's wrap this up down here. Hmm. What? What? Huh? What? What? What just happened? What just happened there? Uh oh. Again, I apologize for anybody who just tuned into this video, but that was actually that was a pretty epic. Uh, Pretty epic circumstance right there. <laughs> so anyway, um, for those of you who are still uh, able to function after that uh, epic uh, cliffhanger climax there, <laughs> um, we've got a couple reactions that you can balance to classify. Go ahead, pause the video. Welcome back. Hope you pause this video <laughs> to uh, balance these and then identify these. In our first reaction, again, I, I won't go through the balancing. Uh, we, there's another video about that. Uh, but we can classify that as a synthesis, rea synthesis reaction or a redox reaction. We're forming only one compound, and obviously we have elements moving into a compound. Same with the second one. We can classify this also as a redox reaction, uh, but also in this case, synthesis and combustion. We've got the sulfur reacting with the oxygen to form the uh, sulfur dioxide. Notice that in this case, sulfur is S8. So we talked about that before, that there are allotropes of elements that have um, subscripts greater than 2. Uh, you're, you're probably not at the level to memorize these yet, but uh, this is, of course, electrolysis of water here. This would be decomposition and redox or transferring electrons. We've got a single replacement next, and since uh, we have elements moving into and out of compounds, that would also be a redox reaction. And then finally, we have a precipitation reaction down at the bottom, so that would be a double displacement reaction and also a precipitation reaction. So I guess that just about wraps it up for this unit. Oh, hey, what? Uh, uh, oh, his brother. It's his brother. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I kind of like the Kambod. I don't know. <laughs> uh, that's nice. Good times. <laughs> Feel free to laugh along at home. 
And so maybe I'll throw another video on here at some point with some of the other ways to classify reactions, some of the ways to uh, predict products for more complex reactions. But that, that's certainly enough to get you by uh, in a first year chemistry course. And so uh, thank you for watching. Hope you learned something. And again, make sure you practice naming so you can balance equations. And uh, have a great day. See you next unit.